It's always nice to see a community let its heart and, and soul shine through and in a community garden like that. So uh, congratulations to the people who have built that terrific public space. Right now we're going to be turning our attention to Texas Superstars. These are plants tested by Texas A&M to really work in our gardens. And I'm really pleased today to have Brent Pemberton joining us from Texas A&M and uh, AgriLife Research at the Extension Center over there. Thank you so much for being our guest. It's my pleasure. Well, let's start off by talking about the program itself, the Texas Superstars. I've seen this for years in the Nursery Center with different plants touted as superstars. How did the program get started and what's its purpose? Well, it actually started back, I think, around in the 1990s. And uh, the first promotion was actually done in 98 mm -hmm. as a Texas Superstar. Some other promotions were done prior to that, but that was the first official mm -hmm. Texas Superstar. And from the beginning, the Superstar program has tried to do a couple of different things. One is to find great plants that can be grown all over the state. And the other is to work with industry as far as growers and retailers to know when we're going to do these promotions to make sure that we've got a supply of the plants mm -hmm. out there in the industry so that the plants are there when we do a promotion so that people can go in and find them when they want to buy them. And this is not any kind of a random program. These are really field uh, tested by the Extension Service and uh, are winners in, a, in the truest sense. We trial those at uh, four major sites um, in the San Antonio and Uvalde area mm -hmm. and College Station and then up in at the Overton Center which is where I am near Tyler and then also in Lubbock um, at uh, Texas Tech. Okay. So uh, proven in the ground all around the state, uh, terrific plants and designed for a whole different array of different kinds of uh, hardinesses, let's say. Uh, they could be disease resistant varieties of plants that we love mm -hmm. or cold hardy forms of plants that we love. Right, and sometimes we have plants that are hardy in the southern part of the state, but they're only grown as annuals in the northern part of the state. Sure. So. Well, Anyway, it just, it's a big we, state, right? It is, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big state. You got to. I mean, it'd be hard to find one that works in every single corner. Right. Right. Well, let's talk about some of the classic ones that have been around for a while, and uh, one that I think of uh, in this regard is uh, our the golden bells or the Tacoma stands, which is. Mm -hmm. You know, ubiquitous now in gardens here in Central Texas, but it was unheard of just 20 years ago. Right. Uh, Greg Grant, who was involved in the program at that time, had found Gold Star Esperanza just mm -hmm. growing somewhere along the side of the road and recognized its uniqueness mm -hmm. as far as being dwarf and early flowering as opposed to the, the straight species. Right. And so, um, anyway, all those plants came from that one he found, and it's propagated vegetatively and is now... As you know, it's all over the place. So. Well, you, you brought a picture of that, uh, the Gold Star Esperanza, and in the foreground is another one of the Texas Superstars, and, and this is uh, a, a periwinkle, is that correct? Or? Yes, they're commonly called Vinca. Mm -hmm. And that is the Cora series of Vinca, and mm -hmm. the uniqueness that it has is the resistance to aerial phytophthora, which is a pretty devastating disease that hit yes. Vinca that well, you're probably a lot of people familiar stopped, with. <laughs> a lot of people stopped <laughs> growing vinca a, a couple of decades ago because of that. That's because right. Because they lost them every single year. That's right. And well, so resistant species is obviously uh, something to uh, look for. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, a couple of other things we want to highlight. Um, <clears throat> there's a, a plant out that I have to say our, our producer, Linda Limsford, loves. It's Angelonia. Tell me about this, because I've never used it in a garden setting. Well, the Angelonia that we have uh, promoted last year is the Serena series, and it's uh, commonly referred to as summer snapdragon, mm -hmm. uh, because if you look at the close-up of the flowers, then it, it, you, can, you can tell that it, they kind of look like little snapdragons or whatever, but they, it's the first series of Angelonias that's grown from seed and it reblooms a lot better for us than a lot of the other Angelonias that are out there. Um, and also it is easier and cheaper to produce. And so that it's kind of a win-win for, for everybody. Right. And, and it's a great plant. And one that um, Linda says is like a surefire summer hit that really survives. That's uh, a great plant, yeah. Yeah, well, um, we're all looking for those summer survivors that can take the southwestern exposure and uh, bloom all season long, and it sounds like a great, great plant. 
Another image that you brought has a, a, a number of different uh, winners in it, and uh, including uh, Salvia, Mystic Spires, and uh, one of the tidal wave petunias, uh, and uh, this is a, a one called Cherry. Right. Now, let's, let's start with the Mystic Spires. Well, the Mystic Spires Blue, there was a, an Indigo Spires that mm -hmm. gardeners may be familiar with, yes, but this is actually plant, a, yeah. I, I can't remember if it's a hybrid or if it was um, gotten by radiation or something mm -hmm. like that, but it's a, it's a mutation that is um, much more, uh, it's more dwarf in the garden, mm -hmm. and so it stands up to the weather. It doesn't flop over and, and that sort That's of thing. That's a big problem with the others, right? It can be, and and it also it blooms very reliably. Mm -hmm. If you, it can be sheared, if it happens to get a little bit too tall. In fact, I like shearing it just a little bit in late summer, and then it grows and kind of freshens up, and it's beautiful for the fall. Mm -hmm. So, but it only takes a couple of weeks to get it back in flower. So, but so, that's an option. Okay, it, so you don't have to do that. There are lots of great salvias, so that's one to add to the list. Mystic spires. Now, tell me about the tidal wave petunias. There are a number of these that you've developed. Well, those are uh, were developed by the Pan American Seed Company, and uh, the tidal wave series is a trailing type petunia, mm -hmm. which is much more vigorous than the traditional petunias that that, that uh, mm -hmm. we used to grow. Right, and um, they're a lot uh, tougher when it comes to standing up to our summer conditions. And these particular ones are also very tolerant of alkaline conditions, mm -hmm. um, which is the reason that they became superstars. Is because they could be grown in places like College Station and San Antonio. In Austin. In Austin, <laughs> right. without, uh, without being chlorotic. Good, good. Well, we, and, and uh, again, it's great to have those carpets of color like they provide. Uh, we see that uh, in another of the images you brought, and this is in combination with Grandma's Yellow Rose, which uh, I love the bright, cheery color on this. Yeah, that's a great rose. It was actually found by um, Larry Parsons and, and Jerry Parsons and Larry Stein, um, and uh, it was actually, they found a, a, an original plant in the Nacogdoches area, mm -hmm. rose that they had grown for some years, and they found a seedling, um, and, and this is Grandma's Yellow. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, it's a, it looks very much like a Floribunda or hybrid tea rose, but it's very uh, tolerant of black spot disease, and it has the the double flowers and a little bit of fragrance and everything, so it's, mm -hmm. it's really a, a really nice shrub rose. Well, it looks beautiful, and in the foreground in that image is the tidal wave silver uh, petunia, which is a striking color. Mm -hmm. That's an unusual color. People sometimes uh, wonder how to use that color, but mm -hmm. uh, when you put it with purple foliage, it really sets it off. In the, in the case of this image, it's set off with coleus, right? Right. And, and well, it's right. a great combination, and then also that combination also works beautifully with the yellow of the rose. I, I think it's terrific. So it does, yeah. those are some great plants. Now this year, you have a number of new introductions that you're touting, including a, a new form of gomfrina, right? Yes, um, we're doing gomfrina because in the last three or four years, there have been some new Gomfrina series that have come out so that we have a huge choice now in Gomfrina. There used to be basically just the old garden form, which is a great plant, mm -hmm. by the way, but we now have some that are, there are, were some dwarf forms that were around, but they're not quite so heat tolerant, but we've got like the Las Vegas series um, and the Audrey series, which are kind of intermediate and a little bit uh, taller, and then we also have that QIS series, which is an unusual color. Okay. Which is the reason I brought uh, brought that picture because it's a it's a very, very neat plant, very spreading, and it, it doesn't uh, doesn't fall over. And real like briefly, and we have to be very brief. Rio Mandevilla is an, another one of the plants that you're touting this year. Yes, and the big deal about the Rio Mandevilla is that it's good in containers and it's bushy, as yeah. opposed to twining. Well, and they're beautiful plants and uh, make a great addition to our patios in containers. Some people would plant them in the ground, though maybe a little cold sensitive here in central Texas. You might I would need, think so, and yeah. in the ground maybe need a little bit of shade. Right, okay. Well, these are all fantastic plants, and we didn't get to some of the horizon plants, which are uh, look really exciting, but we really do appreciate you coming by, and uh, thank you for all the work that uh, your whole organization has been doing to bring these terrific plants to all the Texas gardeners. Well, thanks. Again, we enjoy it. Okay, well, Brent, it's been a pleasure. And coming up next, it's our friend Daphne.